Thank you for joining Pastor Curtis and Joy for this message. If you would like to hear more from Pastor Curtis or Joy, please check them out on their Coker Ministries YouTube channel. Also, please like and subscribe if these messages are a blessing to you. You can also visit their webpage at cokerministries.com. God bless you. Have a great day. This ministry functions on the support of our listeners. We appreciate your prayers and your financial blessings. Your support also helps us to continue to share this message of grace, peace, and Christ's righteousness in the finished work of the cross. You can give online at cokerministries.com or you can mail your support to or prayer requests to Coker Ministries, 15239 555th Avenue, Parkers Prairie, Minnesota, 56361. We pray God's blessings over you. Remember, if you are in Christ, you are blessed, highly favored, and so very deeply loved. Again, thank you for joining us in the work. Be blessed. This is funeral. Her a celebration. It's her celebration. Welcome to all who's joining. We are just about to do this, so grab your elements. We had a long prayer list, so that's why we're a little late getting on. Sorry. Yeah. So, Jesus... We are coming before you with what you have given us. And out of that Passover Seder meal that night before you went to the cross, you chose two parts of that. And you asked us whenever we do this to remember you. So we are remembering you. The first one was when you took the matzah, the middle matzah, out of the matzah, matzah tosh. You pulled it out and you broke it, which is a traditional thing that they always did. And they would wrap up the larger piece and hide it. It was the middle matzah that represented the Messiah. And you said, when you do this, remember me. Yeah. So Jesus, we are remembering that on the cross, on your flesh, because you said, this is my body that is broken for you. That's what you said. This is my body that is broken for you. <laughs> and so over and over and over in the Word, in the New Testament, it tells us, in the New Covenant, it tells us, what was placed upon your body on the cross that was broken for us. And you took all sin. You took all judgment. You took all curse. You were beaten on your body and you took stripes that purchased healing for us. Because by those stripes, your word says we were healed on the cross. You took the judgment, the curse, guilt, shame. You took all of that upon your body. And you said on your body that... The whole law was fulfilled mm -hmm. in your body. So, Jesus, we lift this up and we remember you and we say thank you, Jesus, that because of all that you accomplished, all that you took upon your body on the cross, you did that so that we could say yes to you and so that we could live free from all of those things. We could live free from sickness, free from sin, free from judgments, free from curse, mm -hmm. free from shame, mm -hmm. free from guilt. So, Jesus, we say yes and thank you. Thank you. And we remember you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then you took the cup, and it was said it was the cup after the supper. And you said, this is the cup of the new covenant. This is my blood that I shed for you. When you do this, remember me. And it was a particular cup. It was a cup that also had a wedding and bridal feel to it to the people at the time. Because it was the cup of redemption, cup of joy. Mm -hmm. And um, when, it, when they are remembering redemption, one of the things they remember is how Ruth was redeemed by Boaz. And Jesus is our Boaz. He's redeemed us. And... I said, this is the cup of the new covenant. And he also said, I will not drink this cup with you until I drink it again with you in my father's house, in my father's kingdom. Which was something that was said at a betrothal ceremony when she said yes. <coughs> they all understood that was wedding talk. So, we 
when Jesus shed his blood, and the other day Curtis did a, a message on the seven places where Jesus shed his blood, and they all affected things. It, one place was his, his beard was pulled out, which is our identity. You know, he, he had the crown of the thorns was placed upon him. He sweat blood in his hands and in his feet and in his side. And when he was pierced in his side, blood and water came out, which reminds us, oh, we as women, when we have a baby, what comes out? Yeah. Blood and water. So when he was pierced in his side, he was giving birth to his bride. And when we choose to say yes, it says in Peter that an incorruptible seed is placed inside of us, which is his DNA which causes us to be children of the Most High God, which causes us to be something brand new, something that had never existed before. In Ephesians it says we're neither Jew nor Greek, male or female, bond or free. We are one new man. And the new there, that word means something that had never existed before. Basically, we became one of the same kind like Jesus, who had been from heaven born of a woman. So he was that spiritual realm invested into the physical realm. And we become that physical realm with the spiritual realm invested into us when we have that incorruptible seed placed inside of us. So then we have become one of the same kind so he can marry us. Because yeah. he couldn't marry us if we were of the same kind. So, Jesus, we do remember you and we say thank you. And we honor you and may our lives continually be a reflection of who you are and all you've done. Thank you. I do. Thank you for joining. Welcome, John, to our ladies' Bible study. <laughs> all right. So, we are in... Are experiencing the depths of Jesus Christ. Yep. Um, we are today. We are going over chapters two, three, and four. And we talked a little bit um, last week about who Madame Guyon is. And um, does anybody have any questions about her? She was an amazing woman. <coughs> She's an amazing woman. Back in the later 1600s into the early 1700s, not a lot of people were um, literate, reading. She not only read, she wrote a lot of books, and she was imprisoned. This was one of the books that she was imprisoned for, this one, Into the Bastille, believe it or not, which was not a good place. The Bastille was a yucky place. Um, and the reason why she was imprisoned was because basically it would have been she, she she was preaching a message sharing a message of an intimate personal relationship with the Lord that could bear fruit but it was apart from doing all these works of the law basically was <clears throat> she was you know not about the religious work, she was about the relationship. And so those who are all about the religious works, because that brought money into the structure, they didn't like her. <laughs> and they didn't like those who taught what she taught. Yeah. And so she was in prison for that. So I am thankful for men and women who are willing to stand strong for what they understood and knew was truth. Okay, so yay. So, okay, chapter two, well, the title of chapter, chapter two is Launching Out. And the big thing, and we're, we're going to do an exercise in this today. The big thing, um, she talked about praying the scripture and beholding the Lord. Because she was all about, and at the beginning of, this, of, of chapter two, she says, now remember, I am writing this to all, but in particular, if you are new in the Lord, new in your faith. Because she she didn't she wanted those new in the faith and remember we talked about Watch Mani, who was a, a leadership in in the early in, in China in the early 1900s 1920s plus, and he was in prison for his faith too, 
but he made sure every new Christian got this book. That's how important he thought it was. Um, and, and I mentioned this last week. Watchman Nee wrote a book called Spiritual Man. If you haven't read it, get it, read it. And it's, it's, this, it's a thick book. What's it called? Spiritual Man. Spiritual. It's a good book. And it's down here somewhere. I brought it down. Um, so her, her, her premise at the beginning is, let's develop our relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And you're actually going to hear Curtis and maybe me a little bit out of her. Because... <laughs> um, She talks about reading, when you're reading scripture, when you're reading the word, how many of us read and we have our schedule. I have, I have my plan, okay? And I have my plan. I read Old Testament, New Testament, Psalms and Proverbs. I read Revelation every day. I, I have my plan. And John, I read John every day. Um, but she said it's more important... To read slowly each word meditatively each word and she said it's not how much you read but the way in which you read and she said to be honest you may only get like half a chapter half a paragraph read but if you have really taken it in understood it and basically digested it, swallowed it. You've done yourself much more favor than just reading a whole bunch of words that are just words on the page, right? And so how many times have you heard Curtis say, read slower, <laughs> read slower. Okay, so one of the things that we are going to do today, we are going to take her practice and read slower mine these this is my choice today and then and if you want to we can all participate or not it's up to you sandy send in hers so we're going to do sand we're going to do your sandy good morning i have your list it's a whole <laughs> list sandy no no it's two she has two and i just lost my little paper but it's a whole okay my choice and I have many favorites. Much of word is my favorite. We're going to do Psalm 23. One through three. And we're going to read it really slow. Now, a benefit that we have that she did not have. We have electronic Bibles. We have multiple translations. We can read it in multiple translations and take it in. She didn't have that benefit. You know that they burned um, one time in France they, they gathered 300 of these books in one night and burned them then somebody else bought 1500 and passed them out to everybody he knew oh, <laughs> that'll teach you a lesson oh, gosh. Yeah. okay Psalm 23 verse 1 the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want okay so let's take each word very slow. The Lord. Jehovah. Who is the I am that I am. Self-existent one. Creator of the universe. Think about it. The creator of the universe. Who knows everything. Knows the end from the beginning. He even knows all the mistakes I'm going to make. Loves me anyway, passionately. The Lord. Mm. It's my shepherd. He's my shepherd. Which makes it very personal. He doesn't say our, he says mine. Mine. He's mm -hmm. my shepherd. David understood that when he wrote it because he had been a shepherd. Mm hmm. Mm, Vicky, shepherd, shepherd watches over the flock. He does. Vicky understood being a shepherd. Mm -hmm. She's mm -hmm. hanging out with the shepherd now. Mm -hmm. Yes, he watches. The shepherd watches over the flock. Yeah. The shepherd 
takes care of the flock. The shepherd makes sure that the sheep have good food to eat. The shepherd makes sure that their coat is taken care of. The shepherd carries a staff that sometimes he has to ward off vicious animals. Sometimes with the staff, he has to protect and, and, and grab the sheep when they're running in the wrong direction. There are times that they have to take the staff and break the sheep's leg because he was making too many mistakes and going in the wrong direction. Then he'd have to work on healing the legs. That I didn't know. Oh, yes. And he has to carry it. And he has to carry it. Sometimes the shepherd has to carry the sheep when he breaks its legs. And then it gets the, used to the smell of the shepherd. That's what I had heard. Mm -hmm. And then it will stay with mm -hmm. him after the leg is healed. Yes. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Wow. So, mm -hmm. Also, his smell. voice. They recognize his voice, too. Yeah. Yes. And some yes. sheep won't take their lambs, so then... Dad used to take the, um, the, the after they had, they had the birthing stuff on them, he'd rub it with another, mm -hmm. on this other lamb, and then the sheep would take lamb, another lamb if their lamb died. And mm -hmm. It was kind of a, oh. yeah, process. Oh. <laughs> we had sheep in front of door. <laughs> so you know about being a shepherd. Yeah. <laughs> we used to feed them. Yeah. Yeah. Coke bottles. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was so kind because then, you know, yeah. for, for the sheep that mother didn't quite make it, he made sure that there was another mama Colostrum. to take care of it. Mm -hmm. Another mama to take yeah. care of it. Because that's what the shepherd did. Because mm -hmm. he cared. Yes. And so, God Almighty, creator of the universe, the Lord, is my shepherd. And because he's my shepherd... I am not going to want or lack anything. You know the song we sang? I just want you. We come to him so often for stuff. When he's done everything actually already. Just want you. And then she said, I'm going to go to the next one. He, he makes me lie down in the green pastures. And he leads me beside the still waters. So he takes me to the place where there's the best food. I just have to listen. He takes me to the place where I can have the best refreshment. He makes me lie down there. When I'm lying down there where there's the green pastures and the still waters, it says that he restores my soul. He takes me to that place where there's rest and healing and restoration for my body, my soul, and my spirit. If I would just listen and pay attention. And not be the one that's running away. Oh, and he even goes after that one. Breaks its legs and carries it on his shoulders. And then he says, he leads me and pass of righteousness so that I would give honor to him. So if, if I am allowing him to be my shepherd, God Almighty, Lord creator of the universe, my shepherd who knows everything, yeah. if I'm allowing him to be my shepherd, I'm not going to want or lack any good thing. No. Amplified Classic says it this way The Lord is my shepherd to feed, to guide, and to shield me because he protects us. I shall not lack. He makes me lie down in fresh and tender green pastures. He leads me beside the still and the restful waters. He refreshes and restores my life myself and he leads me in paths of righteousness uprightness and right standing with him not for my earning it but for his namesake <clears throat> so then she said after <clears throat> you take a verse and you read it slowly pray that verse so a way that we could pray that verse Oh, I wanted to read this in the Passion Translation. Yahweh is my best friend and my shepherd. 
I always have more than enough. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace near the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me the right path, leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Yeah. So how can we make that a prayer? We can, you know, Lord, you have declared that you are my shepherd. I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, to help me. Help me to hear you. Help me to follow you. Help me to know your voice like the sheep knows your voice. Help me to understand and, and, and respond to your smell, the smell of your presence. Help me to heed you as you are leading me to that right place where there's the rest and the refreshing and the nourishment that I need. Mm -hmm. And may my life be a reflection of your glory. And you know what? We can pray that for our kids. I have that. What was it a couple weeks ago? Where um, it's in the New Testament where um, Jesus prays for the the disciples and stuff. And then what I did is I took it and I I have it in a binder <clears throat> and I I plugged in all your kids, all the, the kids' the, names, the names, <clears throat> or my own name, mm -hmm. and just. Pray that mm -hmm. that whole thing. It's a real. It says it really is a beautiful prayer. Is that the one in John seventeen? It might be. I don't know. There were so many he gave us. There was a lot of them that day. I could have picked out any one of them to do, but it was it was really good, really good. Yep. Okay. Well, Sandy wants us to do John twenty one, twenty two. Yes. And I, I, I love using electronic Bibles, but um, I will also say, make sure um, you have your hard copies because there's going to be a time when AI might switch and, and tamper with the Bibles that we are reading online. They might. I don't read a Bible online. And, I have that uh, paper. No. And um, when you go to garage sales, buy all the Bibles so that you can have them for the people that need to be have them when we're left when we're gone and they're left behind. Yeah. Okay. Not the fashion. I'll get there, Sandy. Hold on. Was it twenty one or? 22. And Jesus said to him, If I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? Follow me. Is that the right verse, Andy? I'm assuming it is because... I'm, I'm assuming so. That's what you said, right? John 21, 22. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So, and he said, and who is he? Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mine says Jesus said. Yeah. So, and who is Jesus then? Jesus said to me. So, but who is Jesus? Because we're we're gonna we're gonna milk every word. Who is Jesus? <clears throat> Jesus is the the Son, Son of God. The Son of He's, God. Mm -hmm. Yep, He's, he was the Word made flesh. Mm -hmm. In John one, it says he, in John it says he was the Word that was made flesh. He was the Word that spoke the world into the existence. existence from the beginning. From the beginning, so Jesus, the Word mm -hmm. made flesh, the Son of God, said, "If I will that He remain till I come, what is that to you?" He was talking to Peter about John, and there's been. Since then, there has been people saying, well, John never died. Oh, good grief. There are people that have said that. Um, He's in heaven. Well, John himself, he was, um, well, Peter was <coughs> sacrificed um, on a cross. Upside down, right? Upside down, because he said, I, I'm not worthy to be crucified the same as my Lord, so put me upside down. So he was crucified upside down. Um, John 
They tried to kill him several times. He was boiled in oil, and he didn't die. And I'm on the island of Patmos. He didn't die. Yeah, this was an old age. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, he wrote Revelation. He did. He wrote Revelation. That was the last um, book that was penned that's in our canon. Um, Jesus entrusted his mom to John at the cross. It's a big deal. Kind of a big deal. Mm-hmm. So anyways, um, so it was Peter that was asking this question because he was said, what about this guy talking about John? And Jesus said, well, if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? In other words, sometimes we spend so much of our life being um, concerned about what God is doing in somebody else's life. <clears throat> we forget to pay attention to what he's doing in my life. Mm-hmm. And he says, follow me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Follow me. Don't be so consumed about what is or isn't happening in somebody else's life. You follow me. <clears throat> because if I'm so consumed, and you know, that then that gets into, well, you know, judgment, <gasps> judgment or comparing, jealousy. pride, jealousy, envy. Mm-hmm. What what Papa does, Sharon, in your life is great. I love it. But I'm not going to compare what he does in your life what he as to what he's doing in my life. Yeah. And I, I'm I'm not going to hold myself up to anybody else's standard. I'm going to hold myself up to his standard for me. Yeah. Not his standard for you, Teresa. Not his standard for you. His standard for me. Mm-hmm. I am going to ask <clears throat> Papa, like Paul said, I strive to lay hold of those things that he laid hold of me for because he knew me from the foundation of the world and created me with specific gifts and talents that he wanted me to use for his kingdom. I don't need to be a copy of somebody else. No. I need to be who he made me to be. Yeah. I don't need to be envying anybody else's gifting or talenting. I just need to be who he made me to be. Because he made me who he wanted me to be. He put me in the place he wanted me to be so I could touch the people he wanted me to touch. And if I'm trying to copy somebody else, then I'm not going to do what he made me to do. Mm-hmm. So, Jesus, we choose to come before you and to say, yes, I will follow you. I will follow you. I will heed what you tell me to do. I'm not going to look at what you're doing in somebody else's life. I will appreciate the gifting and the working. And and, and as I see you working in somebody else's life, it will help build my faith. When I see you do a healing in somebody's life, it will build my faith that you're a healer. When I see you providing in somebody's life, I I will build my faith that you are my provider. But I'm not going to look at somebody else's life and try to become that. I'm going to follow you. And I say thank you for that. Anybody else have any thoughts about that? I was thinking of a teenager, you know, you see these models and you and you think, oh, I want to look like that. I have to use, yeah, that's mm-hmm. really bad age, you know, mm-hmm. to, um, yeah, I think that's when you kind of go through that stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's and one thing about getting older. You forget about all that. <laughs> you don't care. <laughs> yeah, you don't care. You know what you are and yeah. <laughs> they either accept you or they don't. <laughs> And you don't care if they do. I am. Um, The Passion Translation in that verse says, If Jesus replied, If I decide to let him live until I return, what concern is that of yours? You must still keep on following me. And Amplified Classic, something similar. Jesus said to him, If I want him to stay or survive and live until I come, what is that to you? What concern is that of yours? You follow me. Okay, and then she wanted to do Psalm 27, which is a favorite chapter of mine. Verse 8. Psalm 
I will just say a favorite verse of mine is verse 4 in that. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and behold his beauty, and inquire in his temple. Okay, verse 8. Also a very powerful voice. <clears throat> powerful verse. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face I will seek. And that is so powerful, because we were singing... Nothing else. How often have we been coming before his throne and, oh my God, I need this. I need help here. My kids need your help. I need your help. I need this. I need healing. I need this. I need provision. When have we just come before his throne just to sit there? Or to crawl up on Papa's lap and sit there and just say, I love you. I just love your presence. I just really want to be in your presence. The verse that we are reading, Psalm 27, 8. When you said, this is, when you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, <coughs> your face, Lord, I will seek. So this was David. David wrote this song. And um, as we know, David went through some really hard things, you know. Um, he had been anointed king, and the world didn't necessarily know it, and even his brothers were kind of bugged by it. And um, But he continued watching the sheep. Then they had the great big deal going on with Goliath, and his brothers were there in the battle, and his dad sent him out to make sure... They're all okay. And oh, David confronted big Goliath. And we know all about that. So David had seen the hand of the Lord in his behalf. And the king took him in to his fold. The king gave him his daughter. And things seemed to be going good. But everybody was pretty impressed with David. And, and they were singing songs. So. Saul has killed his thousands and David his tens of thousands and Saul gets really jealous. And so now then Saul starts to try to kill David. And David is now running and fleeing for his life. And well, his son-in-law, right? Yeah, David was Saul's son-in-law. Yeah. <clears throat> so he's trying to kill his son-in-law. Trying to get his daughter to give up her husband. I think I know. told somebody that and they said, no, he wasn't. I yeah. he was, <laughs> yes. So th this is who wrote this, David. You know, and he had times running for his life, and he had to flee to it all, you know, in the wilderness. He had, he, he, it was not, not a good place. He, he was not good. But he has seen the Lord's hand move upon his life and for him many times. He had seen, yeah, he, he's, he'd seen a lot of things in his behalf. And he had always been a worshiper, David. And so earlier in this one, he, he talks about, well, he doesn't have to be afraid because he understands who God is. He's his strength. He's his shield. He's his light in the darkness. But then, David heard God say, Seek my face. When he was in need of stuff, you know, he was in need of protection. He was in need of provision. He was in need of stuff. But God said, seek my face. Yeah. And what was David's response? Oh, my face, Lord, will I seek. And that wasn't just, it wasn't just words. It came from his heart. heart. It came from his heart. And this is the principle. You become like what you look at the most. That's why when Paul said in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, that um, when the veil is removed, and we, are be we are transformed by beholding the glory of the Lord in the mirror. When we're looking in the mirror. Well, what we're looking at in the mirror, because... One of the definitions for the word glory, 
It's God's view and opinion, but it's God's reality. And so if we have the veil of the law removed, and we are looking into a mirror, we are beholding the glory of the Lord, and the glory of the Lord is his view and opinion of me, his reality of me, because we become like what we look at the most. You become what you behold. So, did the disciples speak in tongues? Yes, they did in Acts. Yeah, okay. They certainly did. Oh, it wasn't Acts, okay. They certainly did. (coughs) So, I figured so. I I was like, what is that in the Bible? They absolutely did. That's what we're reading in right now. So, (coughs) God told David, seek my face. His heart responded, your face. I will see. Because when you seek his face, you're not getting, I mean, think of it. You get to look into his eyes of love. When you're beholding his face, you can see his words, his mouth form those words. I love you. Wow. Because I have a friend who had been caught up to heaven and she saw all that. And, wow. and she said his eyes <clears throat> were liquid pools of love. Mm. And I've heard that from other people who've had near-death experiences and things. And so when you see his <coughs> face, how many times, okay, how many times have we, as mothers with our kids when they were small, given them instructions with our face and our eyes? <laughs> right? That the look. Yeah, right? My kids know the look. Right. But, yeah, <laughs> so if, if, we, if we are beholding his face, sometimes as our shepherd, he doesn't have to get out the staff and the hook. We, <laughs> we, we can maybe, if we would just pay attention to the look. Yeah. You know, if we would pay attention and heed the look, right? <laughs> right. We'd be better off. <laughs> Respond to the look. Respond to the look. Yeah. You know, like you're going in the wrong direction. No, no, go there. No. Nope. <laughs> you're talking about husbands and wives, so. <laughs> I hate asking for directions. So, yeah. if we are looking and beholding his face, we can see the looks, the looks of love, the looks of patience, the looks of correction. We can see those looks. We become what we behold if we're looking at his face because, you know what, his hand comes with his face. But if we are always just looking at the hand, we're going to miss the face. We're going to miss the look of love. If we're only looking at the hand. And he wants us to seek his face. So what did you get out of it, Sandy? (laughs) So if we take this verse in prayer, it'd be Father. Lord, you have told me to seek your face. Yeah. Help me, Holy Spirit, so I can respond like David from my heart, that it is your face that I will seek. It is your presence that I will seek, because it's in your presence where there's fullness of joy. It's in your presence where there's peace. It's in your presence where I am changed and transformed by seeking your face. So we seek your face. So if somebody else have a verse they want to do? Yes? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay. I remember that from my childhood from the Baptist Church, but I don't remember where it's at. An <laughs> address of it, huh? <laughs> oh, it's okay. in, it has to be Matthew, isn't it? Le, le, oh, I want to go back to um, Psalm okay. 27, 4. I want to read that in the Amplified Classic. I thought I want to do that. Oh. You have said, seek my face, inquire for, and require my presence as your vital need. And my heart says to you, your face, your presence, Lord, I will seek, I will inquire for, and I will require of necessity and on the authority of your word, your presence. How about that? Okay. Um, I am the way, huh? Because I have Romans 6, 23, 
Yeah, I'm the way I think of being like a path of righteousness. Open that for us. Yeah, I was thinking about that one when we were done. That's a very popular. John 14, 6. Ooh, okay. I knew it was in the New Testament, but I was, I was thinking maybe Romans. But, uh, uh, Isn't there another place where he's, he says, I'm the way? Probably. Well, there's many more places, I believe. Yeah, that's how it's been. Okay, so this verse, we're going to take the words, Jesus said unto him, in this instance, it was Thomas was talking to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. So again, we're going to take it word by word. Jesus. Again, who is Jesus? Son of God. Son of God. The word Savior, made flesh. The the word. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's it all. Everything. He's everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's our Savior, our healer. He, he was crucified, dead, buried, rose again, victorious champion, conquered everything that the devil had. Jesus. And documented. And documented. You know. Yes. Yes. Jesus. And he said, this is a parenthesis. You know how it talks about um, those guys on the walk to Emmaus, they were all devastated. Mm -hmm. And they met this guy in the road. Yeah. <laughs> and this guy in the road yes. explained to them all about Jesus in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you have loved to be part of that conversation? I would love to have oh, heard yes. Jesus talk about himself <clears throat> in all of the Old Testament. Wouldn't that have been such a conversation? Oh, yes. Oh, man. <laughs> so Jesus, the Word made flesh, said, Jesus said, Well, should we not be paying attention to what Jesus said? All the time. All the time. His words. Right? And what did he say? He said, I am. So the word I am is also, when he said I am, sometimes I'm wondering, there's a couple times he said I am that I'm thinking it was probably like, whoa, because I am that I am was the name for God. You know, self-existent one. And, um... So right now he's saying, I am. I am. He's God. I am that I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am the I am. Yeah. <coughs> so he's heard. Yeah. yeah. And so he said, he is the way. Okay, so there's, I'm blonde when it comes to directions. I'm severely blonde when it comes to directions. Severely. Very blonde. And I'm great. <laughs> You're wise. White. That's white. So I am always needing to know the way somewhere. You're ultra blonde. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always needing to know the way. Well, you know what? I do know. I know the way. Because Jesus is the way. I never have to be lost. Because he's the way. Yes. He's the only way I need to know. He's the GPS. Yeah. <laughs> he's the GPS, yeah. Navigator. You plug the GPS in right now. <laughs> we're, we're driving. <laughs> yes. And he said, and he's the truth. Mm -hmm. And you know how um, Chris had that message a uh, series a while back ago, truth <clears throat> versus text. There was a lot of Pharisees that knew all the texts. They knew all the scripture, but they crucified Messiah. Yeah. Truth was standing right in front of them, and they missed it. Mm -hmm. How many times have we actually done the same thing? Read, 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 text, 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 but we've missed the truth of it. Mm -hmm. We've missed the whole point of it. He's truth. And he's never false. He's never a lie. So if he is saying something to you, to me, <clears throat> which is another thing, if we spend time seeking his face, 
in his presence, we're going to get to be familiar like the sheep with the shepherd, knowing his voice. We'll know his voice. Well, that's important to know his voice because the enemy's going to come like an angel of light trying to distract us and deceive us. And he'll say things that sound like scripture. That's what mm -hmm. he did to Eve. He said stuff that sounded. Oh, it sounded good. Good. Right? But it was twisted a little bit. So it's really important that we know his voice, that we um, are familiar with the smell and the scent of his presence, like the sheep with the shepherd. So when he says something, we know it's truth. And if it didn't come from him, we'd better check it out. Because we can be confident and know everything that he tells me is truth. I can rely on it. I can trust it. That's why it's so important that we are doing exercises like this. Because when we are doing exercises like this by ourselves, okay, by ourselves. And that's why we're doing this. Because she was encouraging in this book that you do this. That you spend time in the Word. You know, okay, I did my reading done. Da, 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 okay, I'm done. Ah, well, this is the letter, this, is, this, this right here, this is the love letter from God Almighty to me. And it's, it's the love letter from God Almighty, from Jesus to you. And every word in here is powerful and valuable. And that's why her encouragement is, you know, you need to get to know him. Because there's deceivers out there. And, and at her time, there were... A lot of religious baggage things that were happening, you know. You need to pay to get somebody out of purgatory. Well, I'm sorry, you can't even do that. If you know the word, you would know that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> They've died in their purgatory. They made but, stuff but if you, up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they did. Yeah, they made things up so they could make money. Right. And so we need to be aware of that. And so, like, if you are now part of the Catholic organization now... And you're only and, and you're and, and you're not involved with this right here and spending time with him in the Word, then the Catholic organization is telling you, well, it's okay that you can um, marry gay people and they can be part of leadership and we're going to bless it. Uh, oh. No, that is not what God says. Is that what they're saying now? That's what the Pope yeah. person said. Oh, I'll tell you the new one after we go offline. <laughs> If you haven't seen it, look up Jonathan Kahn, The Sign of the Statue. Hmm. That was actually really good. I would think that he would be changing his mind after what happened in uh, Buenos Aires. So, was it? Where is it? Yeah. Where? Yeah. so okay. So, Jesus, he be like, God me. made flesh. He's not listening. He said, he spoke. So, we need to pay attention. He said, I am. And he is the way. He is the <laughs> truth. And also, he said, and I am the life. <clears throat> he is life. He is life. Have you ever felt like you were drowning in the midst of trouble? Yes. He is life. Have you ever felt sick? Didn't know what, where, you know, didn't know what you're going to, he's life. Mm -hmm. And what comes with life? Health, happiness, provision. He's life. Yeah. Security. And security. He's hope. He's all those things. And no one, no one will come to the Father except through Him. <laughs> Not Muhammad, not Buddha, no one, no one, because he, he is the only way, he is the only truth, he is, he is life, he is it. No one will come. Sandy said this about her verse, we covered it well, Jesus has been impressing on me to not look at those around me, but to follow him and to seek his face and his spirit which is made perfect, and my spirit, which is made perfect by him, will recognize him as I'm in his presence. Our spirit's not the other person's spirit. Right. You can't right. carry that. So, 
since this was your verse, what else would you like to say about this verse? I think you covered it very well. Why don't you make it a prayer? I I guess the truth I was thinking, you know, or follow the truth lead us you to salvation, righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's right, where my mind went. But, mm -hmm. Well, because he's salvation, yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Why don't you make it a prayer? I pray that we follow you, Lord, in every way possible, because we know you will lead us down the right path and give us the righteousness and salvation that we you bestow on us, Lord, because it's... Um, we know we don't deserve it, but you're a gracious God. And show us the truth that leads us to the life and no one. No one um, comes to the Father, your Father, your Father, Lord, except through you. We know that. Bless us all at this table. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Who else wants to do a verse? Mm -hmm. What time is it, by the way? 10.30. Okay. Mm -hmm. We I can gotta, do a couple more verses. I got to read it. <clears throat> you had one. Um, yes, I did. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 is what I wrote down last night. Thessalonians dead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I will read it because I'm right here. 5.18? Yes. I'm going to well, read it. 5. There's and then it's 5.18. Yeah. And yes. I'm going to read it, and then, Teresa, I want you to go through it word by word, okay? Oh, boy. Okay, let me find it first. 518. In yes. everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Yes. Okay. In everything. Which means to be thankful for every day the Lord has given us. Um. This is the day the Lord has made, and you know, we will thank Him. And, and even not, I guess I've heard this over and over now, um, that we don't thank Him for what's going wrong, but we thank Him in. We thank Him in yes. it. Yes. Because He will get the glory when we come out on the other end of it. Because He's the way out. <laughs> We trust He's the way. Him. We depend on him fully mm -hmm. to get us out of our tribulations because he said, um, in this life you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. And uh, it's actually God's will for us to be thankful. Yes. Which is so great because it's just, uh, you know, a lot of times we're wondering if we're in God's will. Well, that is like a no-brainer right there. Yeah. You know, so. so That's a big I thing, like actually. That scripture, yes. I read once people do forget to think. Huh? It's a lot of mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And I think when he gets us tribulation, it's we are to learn a lesson from that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just to help other people. Mm -hmm. in the I, know same tribulation. I know Curtis has a message on being thankful and whenever you start mm -hmm. being thankful for things in your life, no matter what they are, it's just, I mean, it changes your whole attitude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True. Just for everything. I mean, just rain, sun, all the little things. Right. Fresh water coming out of a yes. spout in your house in yes. a couple places. I mean, being able to to have hot water for a bath. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. there's just so much that is just in our laps to, you know, to be thankful for. And our children. Yes. Yeah, our families and our friends. Yes. And look at people in and other our, countries, you know, Africa and India. I know. 
We do have so much to be thankful mm -hmm. for. Yeah. Yeah. And especially for our Heavenly Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and coming to live on the inside of us. I mean, we are just drowning in love from the Lord. And that's a, to be thankful for every nanosecond. Hey, James. I know. And um, th this message that Curtis had, he, it was a series. And the title of it was Thankfulness, the Wine of Life. Oh, because it's basically it's the fruit of our lips giving thanks. Yes. Oh, In Hebrews, so the fruit of our lips <clears throat> giving thanks. So, like, what fruit is coming out? What? Because what do you do with grapes? You make wine. Yep. Okay? So, are you... Are you going to have good wine or not, right? Mm -hmm. Thankfulness is the wine of life. And so there was a guy down in in Oklahoma, Vincent. I'm not going to tell you all of his story, but um, we had been gone already. But when you were new, they would give you a CD of a message. So they gave him a CD of Curtis's message on thankfulness. And it wouldn't come out of his CD player in his car. <laughs> So he listened to it over and over and over and over. He could probably preach, preach it better than Curtis now. I mean, over and over and over. But, you know, it changed his life. He had come out of drug court and everything. He had been, I mean, it was his, his situation at that time was not good. But he began to be thankful, and his whole life changed. His whole condition of life changed because he was thankful. His atmosphere changed. But at the same time, it's the he's hearing it over and over, and it says his word gives life. Mm -hmm. So hearing that over and over again, it gave life to him mm -hmm. and a way out where he probably saw no way because mm -hmm. he's the way. <laughs> choosing, he's away. choosing yeah. life, choosing to be thankful is choosing mm -hmm. life, and that's such a good point. I'm write that down. <laughs> yes, even to each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and like you said, we it's, it's not necessarily thanking God for everything because He doesn't. You know, when we make a stupid mistake, mm -hmm. we end up with consequences from our choices, right? Mm -hmm. So we're not thanking Him for that, but we we can thank Him in it. We can thank Him that He's my way out. Like you said, He is my answer. He's my hope in the dark places. Mm -hmm. He's my light in that darkness. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to pray that scripture for us? Sure. Well, this is a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I think the Lord is really helping us learn this real good. That was her point. That was her point in this. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's her because point. The Holy Spirit is really yes. at work right now. Yes. Yeah. It's just beautiful, Lord. Thank you. <laughs> there, I can be thankful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Father God, thank you for. For teaching us all of these scriptures, and I just uh, breathe in us mm -hmm. this verse. Cause us to just, like, just touch us with, like, okay, you can calm down. Everything's going to be all right. Just think thankful thoughts. And I'll help, I will help you. I'm helping you anyway, even if you don't think thankful thoughts. But just remember to be thankful. <laughs> help us to do that, Lord God. Thank you for your breath of life that we can choose life. We can choose to be thankful and appreciate you in everything, every blessing. Thank you that that is your will. Thank you that you've spelled it out so simply and easily that we can yoke up with you. That your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And we can be thankful that we can, for that, that ease of choosing life. And, and you just... Uh, we walk in you, and, yes. and we are thankful for, yes. for you coming into our spirit and creating a new creature of us. Thank you for joining with us so that we can be a brand new creation that you've made. And 
and uh, I just thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, man. <laughs> so basically, um, did you? Did anybody else want to do a verse? You did. Because I was very, uh, when I read that though, I can honestly say that was, it was, I didn't even have to go back and reread this because it's something that really stuck and it's something that we've been learning all along. Mm -hmm. we, we really have been learning this all along. This is just saying, now it's time to pay attention. Yeah. Let's get yeah. devil deeper into each word, the thing that I've said. Mm -hmm. I was telling them last night, I go, if you're reading it slow enough, I go, you can say you've read it over. I've read that before, but I didn't read that. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's one word that sticks out and I'm going, yeah. oh, I saw that word. Now it puts a different meaning on the whole thing. Yes. So it's those small things that she's described in here. Mm -hmm in that part of, of just, basically you're picking it apart. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. You know that that is your, that is how you've been teaching us all along. <laughs> and I think though too, I mean, we, uh, we've talked about it before that, <laughs> I mean, and you can, we can get into deeper, taking the words, breaking them down, getting them to Hebrew, getting them to Greek, and all these other great things. But when you're breaking them down for me, those particular words, I always try to get one or two very specific ones, not get into too many, mm -hmm. because then I, I get I'm overwhelmed. Not overwhelmed, so mm -hmm. I pick out things that relate to me, and we mm -hmm. just finished talking about that. Yeah. Our own spirit. Yeah. That's, you're great at picking and remembering all those things, whereas mm -hmm. that's not where I'm at. And that's okay. That's okay. Because that's who I am. Yeah. And God sees just who I am, yeah. not her, you, you, you know, yeah. any one of us. Yeah. And that's where I have to, I mean, that would be wonderful. And one day maybe it will happen and I'll get that gift of being able to remember all that stuff, but I don't know. Well, pretty soon we're going to get to <laughs> see the word face to face. And we don't, it won't matter because we'll know yes. anything, everything anyway. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a beauty of it, I yeah, think. As you get older, you won't. And, and I love you the section. Yep. The next, next section talked about beholding the Lord. So basically... Is that three? We're no, we're still in, in two? chapter two. Oh, okay. Beholding the Lord. So after we have spent some time with a verse, just a verse, and just, it, you know, Psalm 23, Lord, you're my shepherd, and hang out just there for a little while. Then you mm -hmm. begin to feel his presence, okay? That's what she's talking about. So then you hang out there and behold, that, behold him in that presence. Just really... Sometimes, because we have such busy schedules with our life and so many things going on. You really do, you know. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes we just need to sit and behold the Lord. Take it in. Enjoy His presence. Like, oh my goodness, the creator of the universe is choosing to allow me to experience His presence. Mm -hmm. ah. Well, let me just drink it in. Let me hang out here for a minute. Like those guys on the walk to Emmaus. Didn't we just feel like, oh, when he was there, oh, yeah. you know, we felt it. But, and so she had, um, I want to read real quick, top of page 11. Think about this. The Lord is found only within your spirit, in the recesses of your being, in the holy of holies. Okay, think about that. You're looking for God here and there and everywhere, moving everywhere. But you know what? Think about this. Inside of you, when the Holy Spirit comes to live in you, when you say yes to Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives in you, you become the Holy of Holies in your spirit. Like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You have become the Holy of Holies in your spirit. How many times do we just sit and ponder that? Wow. Oh, my. And we let the smallest things upset our day. The altar is right in here. Yeah. We come to the altar. Yeah. It's like... 
Yeah. No matter where we are, we're all we can always come to the altar. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter what's going on in the world, protests and all this other stupid stuff going on in the world, mm. but you know what? Right in here is where it's the presence of the Lord dwells right here inside of me. I can, I can just, I can have my quiet moment in the midst of a busy, chaotic situation. I can have my quiet moment right here. This is where He dwells. The Lord once promised to come and make His home within you. John fourteen twenty three. He promised to meet with those who worship Him and do His will. He promised. And does He ever lie? He will meet you in your spirit. It was St. Augustine who once said that he had lost so much time in the beginning of his Christian experience by trying to find the Lord outwardly rather than turning inwardly. And how many times have we been guilty of the same thing? You know, I mean, I love to go places where his presence is. I love to go places where there's the moving of the Holy Spirit and everything. But sometimes we're, we um, are man chasers. This evangelist is here, I'm going here. This evangelist is here, I'm going here. This evangelist is here, I'm going here. You know, and if God is chasing? Reading, yeah, who am I chasing? He's right here. Yeah. I'd like to see the ark, because that's the same thing. <laughs> no. No, no, no. That's very good. It is. It is very good. In the middle of that page, it says, Oh, it is not that you will think about what you have read, but that you will feed upon what you have read. Out of the love for the Lord, you will exert your will to hold your mind quiet. And that's the other thing. How many times do we come to our prayer time and we have our list and blah, 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 blah. But in the midst of it, all these other things are going on in our mind. I have this to do, this to do. I have blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I do that. Yeah. And, and, and we need to sit still and consciously say, you know what, Jesus, right here this moment, it's just you. Yeah. Me and you. You and me. That's why it's nice with this book. You can just, um, I guess I didn't have this with me at night when I read, but um, it's just little pieces out of here. You can say it. Mm -hmm. I hold my, my, my mind quiet before you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Allow my mind to rest. Mm -hmm. And these are excerpts from her book. Just take the little snippets out of there and you can even pray that over yourself. You need quiet. And that's revelation because I didn't think about that before. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We need quiet time, but then I think sometimes I get up in the morning and think, I got to do this. And I'm so glad I have things to do in the house. You know, kind of mm. eases my mind to know. I that. did that this morning. I, I got up and I go, oh, I got to wash my windows. I got to finish quilt. Lord, I got to remember you first. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure. glad I have those things to do, or I'd be like, oh. And, 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 you know, I did. Yeah. I like what she said. It's about tasting it. Mm -hmm. And, okay, so like imagine, I like steak, okay, a lot. And taking that bite of steak, just really enjoying the flavor of that steak after your husband has done such a good job cooking it on the grill and seasoning it just right and just... Mm. And fried mushrooms. Over. <laughs> <laughs> Knock it off, women. It's getting close and, and to lunch. <laughs> and taste it. And taste it. But you know what? You have to swallow it. Yeah. yeah. Because the, the nutrition from it. comes when you swallow it. And sometimes, you know, and, and David even said, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. That's Psalm 34 8. Um, and then chapter 3 said this The depths. Mm -hmm. Even for the unlearned. And so she was talking about just going deeper and deeper. And and spend time. She she mentioned Luke 17, 21. Mm -hmm. The second part of that verse. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Amplified Classic says, For behold, the kingdom of God is within you, in your hearts, and among you, and surrounding you. So think about it. Not only are you the holy of holies. The kingdom of God is in you. And what does it say? The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is in you. Okay? And so, chaos going on in the world, right? Yeah. Sharon, for you, when you're going into the courts and things. The kingdom of God, you walk in and what walks in with you is righteousness. Yes. And peace. Mm -hmm. 
walks in with you. And that's and that in turn is we just did it. It's a whole prayer. Jesus, your word says your king the kingdom, your kingdom, the kingdom of God is within me. Yes. And just make that into a whole yes. prayer. Yes. Your righteousness, your peace, your joy. I you that. are within me. Yes. I have nothing to fear. Amen. I mean it's it's a whole prayer. I can't imagine a woman not letting her grandmother take care of her daughter once in a while just to yeah. yeah. It, it's I, mean, a, I loved to have a break when I was here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the, you know what? A little bit. The, the availability is there. It's for them to grab a hold on if they choose. So, <laughs> but so I find peace in everything. Yes, peace. So, I mean, think about it. The kingdom of God is living in me. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Wow. And we are letting... The smallest things upset our day. Mm -hmm. And I loved how she went through a little bit of um, praying the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that's beautiful. So read that, pages 16, that. 17, yep. 18. It's very, very beautiful. She really comforts that down. And, she? Yep, she does. And then chapter 4, the prayer of simplicity. And, and again, like back at the beginning, are we always coming to the Lord for stuff? Or are, are we just wanting him? Do we want his hand or do we want his face? Yeah, right? Because a lot of times we're just... Um, want his stuff. We have his stuff. Yeah. yeah. We already do. He's already just like... King of God is in here. Just like... Ah. It's okay. Yeah. He gave us everything for life and godliness. Yep. Song of Solomon 1 3, she, she mentioned this. Because the fragrance of your good ointments, your name is as ointment poured forth. Mm. Yes. Doesn't the shepherd pour oil in the sheep's ears or over the head to yes. clean out the bugs, get yes. rid of the parasites? Yes. And that's like an anointing. Yes. Isn't it? Do that? Maybe they will work on that little puppy. Well, I remember what we did to get rid of. Things like sheep. I'm Revelation. not going to go there, though. <laughs> I was thinking. Oh, 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 but, oh, icky. Oh. Yeah, that was icky things. <laughs> but so think about his name, okay? His name. If we're talking about Abba Father. Oh, well, he's my father. He's my dad. It's like honey on my lips. Yeah, it is. And water to my soul. Yes. <laughs> Jehovah, which is I am that I am, mm -hmm. and God eternal, all those things of the name of God, the Father, the names of Jesus, he's Prince of Peace, peace. he's oh, Messiah, oh. he's Savior, he's oh. Healer, he's Redeemer, he's the way, he's the truth, truth he's the life. life, he's the bread of life, he's the living water. Yes. He's everything. And it is as ointment poured forth. Yes. So sometimes we have to Spend some time being still and quiet. Focusing on him. Because he also said this in Revelations. He said this in, in John. He's coming back for a bride who has made herself ready. So this is my question. Are we wanting our groom just for the stuff he has? Or do we want our groom? I want my groom. Mm -hmm. And all that he has. <laughs> <laughs> well, it comes with him. But even if he didn't have stuff, I want my groom. But he does have stuff. That love. Yes. Yeah, we want his love. His love that never ends and never quits and never fails. We've always had it. Mm -hmm. Even before we were saved, we had his love. And when we let his love in, it casts out all the fear. Mm -hmm. And the dread. All of it. Cast out all fear. His perfect love casts out all fear. All of it. We never have to walk in fear of anything. If we let his love in. I mean, we don't. Go ahead. Oh, just that, that scripture came to me on the way over here. That is, his perfect love casts out all fear. All of it. Because I started fearing about something. And it's like, he was on that one right away. Yay. 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 So next week, 
Um, I want to go through chapters five through nine. Can we go through four? Just a little bit. Just focusing on him, focusing on his presence. Um, okay, I, I want to read. I want to read this on the very bottom of twenty-three. Five, seven, and eight. You said or five, seven. Five, seven. Five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Five through nine. Okay, this is the very bottom of twenty-three. After all, why do you come to the Lord? Do you come for him to, for his sweetness? Do you come for him because it's enjoyable to be in his presence? Let me, let me recommend a higher way. As you come to the Lord to pray, bring a full heart of pure love, a love that is not seeking anything for itself. Bring a heart that is seeking nothing from the Lord, but desires only to please him and to do his will. So, dear Christian, as you come to your Lord to pray, do not come for spiritual enjoyment. Don't even come to experience your Lord. But then what? Come just to please Him. Because you will have learned to love God just because you love Him. Not because of His gifts. And not even for His presence. Just love Him because you love Him. Because He loves you because He loves you. He loves you. Because He loves you because He loves you. Because he loves you. <coughs> so come to him just because you love him. Mm-hmm. Oh, it says here just to please him. Just to please him. Yeah. And part of pleasing him is being in his will. And oh, being thankful. That's part of his will mm-hmm. for me. Right. In all things. Yeah. Uh, I like that. I like that last sentence too. Yep. So who wants to pray us out? I'm going to pray with this. Okay. This was my scripture. Okay. This was very profound to me. What's your scripture? Um, it's Jeremiah 29 11. Ah. All the way through just about the top of 14. And I think it really speaks a lot about what we just read. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's an awesome, awesome one. Uh, Yes, it is. I'm just going to read what it says. Maybe you can think about that. For I know, for I, this is God, God knows. Thank you, God, for knowing our thoughts. These things that you think towards us, they're all just good thoughts. Says the Lord, your thoughts of peace for me. Not have no evil thing will touch me. That you want to give me a future and a hope. A future not just in this world, but a future with you forever. I'm going to come to you and I'm going to call on your name. I'm going to go and pray to you, Lord. And you're going to be there to listen to me. My every word, mm-hmm. everything that's on my heart. It never falls on a deaf ear. Mm-hmm. And then I will you I will find you. I will seek you and I will find you. Because I'm seeking you with all my heart. Search me. Search me, Father. Search my heart. If there's anything impure, unholy, or unrighteous, Father, you go into those parts of my heart and you pull them out. Mm-hmm. Take them out and fill it up with you and your word. Mm-hmm. What you say about me. And in those times, I'm going to find you. Mm-hmm. And you're going to bring me out of those places where I've been held captive. Mm-hmm. And where I've been held captive, you're going to set me free. Yeah. We're thankful for this. We're thankful for this lesson. We're thankful for being able to just spend quality time with you. Just a one-on-one time. Being able to really feed on your word. Absorb it. I like how Curtis says, chew on it. Mm-hmm. So that it can fill us up, fill us up with your truth, fill mm-hmm. us up with your life and light, mm-hmm. your increase in everything that we're living in this world, that good's going to come out of it. Because mm-hmm. you have a purpose. <clears throat> your word just said, your th- <laughs> you have a calling for us and a purpose in our life. Mm-hmm. 
So we just ask you to bless this day, bless this time. Thank you for this book. We're um, just discovering who you are through this book and how to spend this quality time with you. Just bless each one of us as we leave this place, Father. Just protect us with, with safety and health. And in all things we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thanks for joining. What were you going to say? Love you, Deb. Oh. Oh, well. Thank you for joining Pastor Curtis and Joy for this message. If you would like to hear more from Pastor Curtis or Joy, please check them out on their Coker Ministries YouTube channel. Also, please like and subscribe if these messages are a blessing to you. You can also visit their webpage at cokerministries.com. God bless you. Have a great day. This ministry functions on the support of our listeners. We appreciate your prayers and your financial blessings. Your support also helps us to continue to share this message of grace, peace, and Christ's righteousness in the finished work of the cross. You can give online at cokerministries.com or you can mail your support to or prayer requests to Coker Ministries, 15239 555th Avenue, Parkers Prairie, Minnesota, 56361. We pray God's blessings over you. in Christ, you are blessed, highly favored, and so very deeply loved. Again, thank you for joining us in the Word. Be blessed.